Leaving the theater for Kevin Goiter's Saw 6, I was astonished. I could not wait for the next one. So many possibilities. Um, what happened to Tara and Brynn and Pamela? What's going to happen to Hoffman and um, Jill? What was the secret envelope that Jill gave to the hospital? What's up with these cameras? All these really, really, really made me aside for Saw. What I thought was going to be 7, but it turned out to be Saw 3D. And, um... I just came back from the Saw Appreciation Day um, at my local AMC. AMC, yes, my local. Um, it was actually a new theater um, that I, because I've never been to it, so it was new for me. Um, I went there so I could go to Tron Night, which actually turned out to be a success and better than Saw 3D. Weird. So, um, I was anticipating this, okay? I know that Kevin did not have a lot of decision in making of Saw 3D because of the whole deal with David Hackle and him. Um, Kevin, like, literally came on the spot and he had a script and he was forced to shoot the script. Um, and he barely had any say into it. He had to rewrite really quickly. Um, and so... It kind of became a catastrophe, I guess, you could say. Um, he had fun, though, making it, I saw in his pictures on his blog. Um, and he was really excited to try out the new equipment, I guess. But, you know, I really wasn't thrilled when I heard Saw was going to be in 3D. Um, I was actually a little bit disappointed. Um, Saw, for me... As a series that never, you know, regurgitates or rehashes a whole same idea. It always is original. Um, the twists are always amazing. The characters are always well thought up. Um, and everything is great. Um, after I watch a stall film, I cannot wait for the next one. Um, I'm, you know, eagerly anticipating it. But with this one, it just, it just didn't cut it. Um, I thought that the ending was a little bit too predictable. Um, and if you've ever been on Hodge, or House of Jigsaw, I like to call it Hodge because I'm new and I'm stupid. Um, you know, it's probably what people think that is going to happen at the end, is what's going to happen at the end. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, um, that'll be in, um, another, another section. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut this halfway. But, um, I was very excited, I didn't know a lot. A new character, Bobby Dagen, and... I was very, very excited to see how, you know, he was going to work out. And I thought that he was interesting. I thought that his character was, you know, well-developed, probably the most well-developed character in that movie. Um, and I thought it was a very interesting approach to go with the whole self-help session. Um, and this is not spoilerific. It's all part of the plot line. So if you've ever read, like, anything about Saw 3D, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, I don't know. Maybe the 3D messed it up. It just didn't look... What I'm just trying to say is... I have to go to the spoiler section because that's where my whole, um, you know, voice comes out and tells it as it is. But, um, my whole deal was a 3D kind of made it look unrealistic. And to me, a Saw movie is very realistic. Um, okay, I'm kind of biased because I'm a Saw fan. Uh, to those non-Saw fans out there, I know you guys hated it. I know you said, it hasn't been realistic since the first one. That wasn't very realistic at all. And, um, yeah, just that I gotta say, well, you know what? Go watch Friday the 13th. Go watch your Halloween movies, um, who, you know, don't play with conventions. They are, you know, just a guy stabbing people. With this, it plays conventions. It It's a new thing for horror. Um, well, it was a new thing for horror. It's not now. Uh, well, I guess it still is, but whatever. Um, it just played on all these conventions. It was original. It was unique. Um, and so I, my verdict is, um, after the six, it should have been laid to rest. That was probably the perfect ending to the series. As much as I hate to say it, as much as it really didn't conclude... Um, all of it, um, it should have been laid to rest. Um, saying that, Saw 3D did conclude a lot. Um, it did explain a lot, um, not, maybe not as much as I really hoped for, but it was, for an ending, it was probably, it, it really concluded the series, I guess. 
I'm not saying that the predictable ending was, I thought, was, you know, not, you know, kind of a cop-out, but, you know, I thought it was very well shot, and it had my heart thumping the whole time. The way it was edited, um, it kind of got, got your heart thumping, um, so I kind of liked that, um, but yeah, here is the spoiler section. <laughs> Finally, I can speak my mind. They should have just explained the whole deal with um, Dr. Gordon being, um, you know, you know, I know who you are, guy. And I think in the fifth one, and I think that they should have explained Dr. Gordon um, being the madness guy he was, or not even, you know, go there. I didn't like that twist. It was so predictable. That's what I'm trying to say. It was predictable. Okay. Um, I at least think that they should have specified that the package that Jill was um, giving um, Dr. Gordon was for Dr. Gordon Saw 6. But, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't like Dr. Gordon being in there. I don't think that the package thing should have ever been in Saw 6. I think that they should have cut that out. The you know who you are or whatever. I think they should have cut that out in Saw 5. I think that... The camera deal, um, I don't, it just wasn't a big twist. Like, none of it was a twist. It didn't feel like a Saw movie. Oh, that's, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. It didn't feel like a Saw movie, you know? Like, when you see a Saw movie, first of all, it's in 2D, you know? Um, second of all, um, they usually don't listen to the message boards when writing the script, where, um, Dr. Gordon is the guy who helped jigsaw and at the very end Hoffman is in the bathroom I remember pretty much reading exactly those words um, on House of Jigsaw so um, I pretty much could have told you the twist ending before I saw the movie which you know it, it was kind of a cop-out in that way um, but in another sense I loved how it was edited um, I thought that the last like six minute segment was beautifully edited, my heart was thumping the whole time, um, but it was another one of those Paranormal Activity 2 things, where, um, this is gonna spoil PA2, but where you're expecting something happening at the end when the screen goes black, but nothing happens, <laughs> and you're expecting something else to happen, but nothing happens, you know, Dr. Gorin just shuts the door and says game over, which... I just don't know how I feel about that. I think it was it was a great finale to the series. I think it was. It just it just didn't hold true to the series of there's this great twist that no one expects. <laughs> you know? And I think a lot of people expect this twist. Um I also think um that a lot of characters weren't developed a lot. I think um, that some of the traps were too, like, I don't know, the traps, the traps, there's 11 of them, there we go, there's too many traps, not enough character development, I'm sorry, okay, Kevin, I love you, you had no choice in this, okay, okay, I love the movie, it has a place in my heart, but there were so many dang traps, that's all it was, there was no plot line, it was just traps. That's all it was. Really, truly. Okay? I knew by the end that Jill was gonna get killed by Hoffman. I knew by the end that Dr. Gordon was gonna be the, you know, the guy helping Jigsaw throughout the entire time. It was implied. It was predictable. I knew it, okay? I Everybody knew it. I'm sure if you think about yourself after you've seen it, you knew it, okay? <laughs> You knew that this was going to be the ending. I don't know. There was just so many traps. So little character development. That detective dude. Um, I forgot his name. He was cool. He was a little bit funny. He was a little comic relief and all the goreness and stuff. But, um... No. <laughs> that didn't help not knowing anything about him until this one. At least with, like... You know, with Tap in the first one. You gotta feel with him. I mean, 
you had a long, um, I want to say journey, but I mean, you, you know, you spend time with him, you understand him. And number two, Eric Matthews was there, um, and two and three and pretty much four. He was there constantly, you know? Carrie, you got to know her. I mean, you've known her since the first one. Um, and then you have Hoffman, who you meet and saw three, and then it's four, and then five, and then it becomes, it becomes a main character, and then, um, you know, he becomes a very main character. And so, I mean, they were already very well developed. Um, but, you know, there was no Amanda. There was barely any John. Uh, there was... There was just no... Saw? It just didn't feel like a Saw movie. I was just so ecstatic after Saw 6. I think this is the way it should have gone. They should have, you know, filmed it in 2D. Should have had Tara, Pamela, and Brent at the very beginning, right after the public trap. They can have the public trap. I didn't like the acting. It really had no point to the storyline whatsoever. But it was a very cool idea, and I think if it was executed very well, um, not intentionally in 3D, it could have really, really worked. And so I think right afterwards should have been whatever happened to Tara, Pamela, and Brent. I think, actually, I think that Pamela, I saw this on the How to Jigsaw board. So, I mean, um, you know, I saw it like a week ago. So, I mean, it's not like they stole it from us. And again, the Gordon thing, maybe they saw that on them on their own, but I'm pretty sure that we've been speculating that since Saw 2. So, I think they had a little bit of help. So anyway, I think that Pamela should have had the choice to kill Tara or Brent, um, and I think that she cho should have chose that to kill him. Um, I don't think that there should have ever been a dream sequence with Jill. I think that was a little bit um, stupid. <laughs> I think that the death should have been the go-kart death, um, and, um, I think that should have been the ending. Um, the, um, whole bear trap deal was kind of expected. Um, I probably could have also told you that beforehand. And so, um, yeah, I think after that, um, it should have just, you know, played out. There should have been traps. I like the whole self-help guru type thing. I thought that was very well done and whatnot. And then I think... The ending should have been Bobby Dagen. He finished all his traps in 2D. No no 3D. Okay. Um, and I think that Acquire. <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid. But Acquire. Um, acquire. Acquire. Um, impacted I guess you could say. Acquire impacted Zep, Hello Zep theme song. To go off. While Jigsaw is. Um explaining why he did everything he did and then Jigsaw, um, Billy the Puppet, dude would come up on the screen for one last time and say congratulations you have survived some people are so ungrateful to be alive but not you not anymore and it's gonna be like you know you survived Saul and stuff but um yeah so many traps the whole thing where she had to pull her, the thing out of her mouth, I was, I don't know, oh my god, <laughs> like, they kind of went a little bit too extreme for a Saw movie, um, I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, what I love about Saw, what I'm all trying to say through all of this, is that Saw to me is gore, storyline, plot, twist, characters. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. <laughs> you know, like, I really want to love it. I'm sorry, Kathy and Kevin and Elizabeth and all those people in the Saw world that made this movie, the writers. I just didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I was disappointed. I'll pick it up on DVD. Um, I have no problem with that to complete my Saw collection. Hopefully in a director's cut. A major director's cut. The end. It's just 
feels so weird. <laughs> 